you use that chat box, I'll go through and be able to read those questions once we wrap up the presentation. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share, let's see. All right, um, Mike, and then you can take it away. All right, great. Thank you, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us this afternoon. Uh, as Mark said, we're going to go through a few PowerPoint slides and then hopefully answer some questions for you. But this is kind of designed to be an overview of uh, Augustana Athletics. And as Mark mentioned, my name is Mike Sapolsky. I serve as the athletic director here. Um, I am currently uh, finishing my 12th year at, at Augustana and my 37th year of working in college athletics. I started uh, back in the 1980s. I'm basically probably about the same age as most of your parents and uh, been fortunate to have been at Augustana since uh, 2008. I worked 20 years at the Division I level and have now uh, finished 17 years working at Division III. One of the things I really like about Division Three athletics is uh, I've found that the student athletes are just as committed to their sport. Uh, they might not be as fast or be able to jump as high or whatever the case may be, but they're certainly just as committed. And the thing that I really like about Augustana athletics in particular is that we have such a strong emphasis on the balance of being a student first and being an athlete second. And whenever I speak to student athletes and their parents kind of talk about three priorities. Priority number one, first and foremost, is always academics and being focused on your academic program and graduating in four years with your degree in hand with the next step of being a first job or graduate school. Athletics then is priority number two. Uh, essentially, uh, when you're part of an athletic team here at Augustana, it's the equivalent of having a part-time job. Your in-season commitment is usually a little bit more than your out-of-season commitment, but you're going to be engaged with your sport and your coach and your teammates uh, the entire academic year in some capacity. And then priority number three is everything else that you can fit into your schedule. There's 168 hours in the week, and if you're good at time management, you're going to find that there's ample time to get engaged and involved in other things on campus, and that's kind of the balance that we want. We want you to get outside of your comfort zone uh, and interact with, with other people on campus, faculty, staff, administrators, and other students to have the most ro uh, robust experience possible. You can go ahead and switch the slide, Mark. Yep. Uh, as you can see on the slide, Division Three within the scope of the NC2A, there's about 1,100 schools, and Division Three is the largest. There's about 450 Division Three schools in the country. Uh, about 80% of the Division Three schools are private, small college, liberal arts schools, similar to Augustana. The average enrollment of the private Division Three schools is around 1,200 students. We're twice that size, about 2,500 students. But uh, Division Three is the largest in terms of the number of schools. It's also the largest in ter terms of the number of participants. Um, the biggest thing that separates Division Three from Divisions One and Two is Divisions One and Two have athletic scholarships, and Division Three does not. Uh, our financial aid packages are, are based upon your academic performance in high school how you do on the ACT and the SAT and, and your family's financial situation. Uh, your parents uh, undoubtedly at some point in time uh, earlier this year or late last year filled out a document called the FAFSA and that uh, is a compilation of their tax data that pr uh, produces some information that our financial aid folks utilize to uh, put together your financial aid package. Uh, but th that's really the biggest separation as far as the differences between Division I, Division II, and Division Three. At Augustana, we currently sponsor 25 programs with three new ones that we are going to be launching and will be competing for the first time during the 21-22 academic year. 
where we have a listing there of the sports that we offer. The sports that are italicized and underlines is, means we have that sport for both genders. So as you can see, we've got a pretty uh, extensive list. We forgot to put tennis in there, but we have men's and women's tennis. And then there's a couple of facility shots, a uh, picture of Lindbergh Stadium in the center there. That's home for Augustana football and our uh, outdoor track program. The Carver Center, uh, home for basketball, volleyball for both genders, and our home wrestling matches. And then uh, an illustration of our new pool. Construction on that facility began about five weeks ago, and it will be completed in May or June of 2021 in advance of the 21-22 academic year. And we're excited about this new facility. It's going to be a, a fantastic pool, uh, larger than our current pool, which will allow us to expand our swimming and diving rosters. And we're going to also be adding men's and women's water polo as varsity sports, along with women's wrestling. As far as our conference is concerned, Augustana competes in the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. There's about 45 Division III conferences in the country. And using a Division I term here, the CCIW is regarded as kind of a Power Five type of conference within Division III. Uh, most Division III athletic observers would tell you that the CCIW is without a doubt one of the top two or three Division III conferences in the country. So our conference is highly competitive on both a regional and a national basis. And for the most part, whatever sport you are competing in, if you are uh, a conference champion, that means you're going to also be nationally ranked and have a great chance of doing well at the national tournament. We provided a listing there of the nine schools that are part of the CCIW. There's two schools in Wisconsin, uh, Carroll University, which is up by Milwaukee, and then Carthage, which is in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, just north of the Illinois-Wisconsin border along Lake Michigan, and then there's seven schools in Illinois. In addition to Augustana, there's four schools in the Chicago land area, uh, Elmhurst, North Central, North Park, and Wheaton, and then two schools in the central part of the state, Illinois Wesleyan and Milliken. For the most part, in addition to our conference opponents, uh, our teams will compete against other Division III schools, typically on a regional basis within the state of Illinois, also Missouri, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Iowa. For the most part, uh, we typically travel maybe three, three and a half hours from campus. There are exceptions to that when we travel further, uh, but for the most part, our, our travel is on a regional basis because we really want to minimize the amount of missed class time you will have as a student athlete. To give you a little bit of an idea on that, when our coaches put their schedules together, kind of the, the the way that we put them together is we have the thought process that our student athletes would never miss more than five Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes or no more than three of their Tuesday, Thursday classes during the course of a semester. And typically when we travel, there are exceptions to this, but typically when we travel, we're not going to miss the entire day. We're usually, uh, depending upon where we're traveling to, leaving campus, between one and three o'clock in the afternoon. I realize college students uh, typically operate on a little different schedule than the rest of the world, but if you can enroll in as many morning classes as possible, you'll really do a great job of even further minimizing the amount of missed class time you would have as a student athlete. All right, um, and so we had a little bit more in a presentation, but with so many seniors in our group, I think it'd be really helpful to kind of open it up and take questions from you guys that you have. Um, certainly as we near um, the, the end of the academic year for you guys, um, things such as orientation, um, things such as housing are probably um, at the, the top of your mind there. So feel free, go ahead and use the message bar there. You should be able to send a message to everyone in the waiting or everyone in the group, um, but go ahead and start uh, popping up some questions and Mike and myself will be able to answer those. And so while we do wait for that, one of the questions that we hear most often um, is about the fall uh, with some of the uncertainty um, about stay-at-home orders. 
Um, that is the question I'm getting most frequently from students right now. Um, and so to answer that, um, Augustana fully expects to have our students move in next fall. Um, that's kind of how we are operating right now. We obviously will take the recommendations of local, state, and federal government into effect as well um, with some of the uncertainty. Um, but everything we have right now is going to be on getting students um, registered for courses, um, likely virtually over the summer, but then to have our students move in um, there in late August. So um, we have our first question uh, from William, a uh, track athlete from California. How is the adjust adjustment for the weather aspect and social aspect? Um, I'll let Mike talk about the weather because he he's a Southern California guy. <laughs> Yeah, William, um, I went to school at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California, and worked there for 20 years. And there's no question that there's a little different weather here in the Midwest than you're accustomed to in California. Uh, we average about 45 inches of snow during the course of the year. So that time frame typically from probably early November through the first part of March, you're gonna see uh, cooler weather uh, with definitely uh, snow and freezing temperatures. That's going to definitely be an adjustment uh, as far as that's concerned. So you'll certainly want to buy uh, and bring appropriate clothing as it relates to jackets, hats, gloves, things that you might not be accustomed to uh, in your current situation as a resident of California. Yep. Um, and so part of my background, I'm a 2015 graduate from Augustana, so I can speak a little bit on behalf of the, the social climate on campus. Um, I am getting older and older, and so I, I won't try to put myself in the shoes too much. Um, but Augustana is going to welcome students from all over the United States um, and then also all over the world as well. Uh, from a social standpoint, um, you're going to meet students um, from all types of different backgrounds. Um, the diversity on campus can be measured in a lot of different ways. Um, and so um, we're gonna have students from Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, so your Midwest region. Um, we'll have close to 70 students from the state of Colorado on campus. Um, we'll have students from Florida, um, especially like our track team has a couple Florida athletes typically. And so you're gonna meet students from all over the United States. You're gonna meet students from high schools that have a graduating class of maybe 30 students in the entire graduating class you're gonna meet students who had 4,000 students in their high school. Um, and so um, really, um, because everyone's coming in together um, and, and during welcome week, you get adjusted, um, you get to meet a lot of people, it's really a, a welcoming uh, situation. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, the, the questions are starting to come through. Um, Mike, what about uh, sports that will have uh, contests or practices over the breaks, uh, specifically fall, winter, or spring break? Okay, so this past year was our first year with the uh, semester calendar with the J term. And when we have student athletes that are here over uh, any academic break, uh, your housing as an underclassman is taken care of. You'll be living whatever your residence hall that you're assigned to when you show up to move in at the beginning of the year. You will remain in that residence hall throughout the course of the year and be there during break periods. There's no cost associated with that. And then as far as your meals are concerned, uh, all those meals are taken care of by the college uh, through the various uh, sport budgets. Depending upon the time of the year, those meals will either be in the cafeteria, just like they would be during the course of the regular academic year, or if we don't have a large enough critical mass of student athletes on campus, uh, the coaches do one of two things. They either may give their student athletes meal money for a couple days and you're kind of on your own to go ahead and spend that money accordingly and, and eat what you want. Or they may also intermix saying, we're gonna give you meal money, but we're also gonna take you out for a couple meals. That all depends upon the roster size and what coaches are accustomed to. Uh, but the bottom line is during those academic breaks, when the rest of the students are gone and student athletes are here, uh, your housing and, and your meals will all be taken care of. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a couple of questions about uh, roommates and, and housing as well. Um, and so uh, Mike uh, Hudson had asked, uh, are athletes from the same sport often room together? Um, this is a process that each sport will handle a little bit differently. 
Um, a lot of times we see that our current students, uh, or our incoming students, are going to interact with each other well before they get to campus. Um, they're gonna be connected uh, via social media. Some coaches are gonna start group chats and we'll have, uh, we'll have students connected in that fashion as well. Um, when you go to register for housing, um, that'll happen a little bit later this spring. Um, you have the ability to type in the name of the person that you wanna room with. Um, and so uh, Kirsten is a soccer player. So if, if Kirsten's gonna get connected with another soccer player, she might text Coach Mejia and say, hey, I'm trying to figure out who I'm gonna room with, um, what other you know, soccer players might be uh, coming in. Well, then Coach Mejia can give and, and kind of pair up in that fashion. Um, other times we'll see students where they don't wanna live with another student athlete. Um, they wanna experience a, a social piece of, of campus with a student who's not involved in athletics. That's perfectly fine too. Um, it's not gonna be totally controlled, but if you do wanna find somebody in that same sport, you have the ability to. Um, next Mark, question. Just to, Mark, to follow up on that just a that. little bit, um, our rising juniors are going to be doing their housing the first week of May, and then our rising sophomores will be doing their housing shortly thereafter. And for the incoming freshman students, pay attention to your email because you'll be getting notification from our, our residential life folks about how the housing process works. And then typically there's a uh, basically a, a survey that you fill out where it's kind of trying to match people based upon similar characteristics and habits. And then the housing is usually released, it's usually around the second or third week of July. And again, if you're interested in rooming with a teammate, I would suggest that you just make contact with uh, your respective coach and have that dialogue with them. Uh, typically how that survey works, as Mark indicated, if Mike wanted, myself, if I wanted to room with Mark and Mark wanted to room with me, if we just fill out our survey accordingly and indicate that, then the folks in residential life will match those people together. So be proactive and have that discussion with your coach uh, if, if there's a specific roommate that you're interested in. Thanks, Mike. Uh, our, our next question is about jobs on campus or a part-time job during the season. Um, kind of what the time management looks like for those students. Um, in, in a word, yes, you are able to work during the, the season, uh, certainly during the academic year. Um, what students find is that jobs on campus are going to have more flexibility in the hours. Um, and so, for example, in the admissions office, we'll employ um, anywhere between 80 and 90 students during the year. Um, and so I'll use my student worker this year as an example. Um, Elliot is not an athlete, but he is involved in music. Uh, he's a music ed major, so time commitments are pretty similar there with music and athletics. So um, Elliot would work between eight and 10 hours a week, but he would have an 8.30 class. He would be in class until right before 10 o'clock. He would come into the office from 10 to noon every day and work for two hours and then go eat lunch and then have his early afternoon classes. And so a lot of our campus partners, um, whether it's residential life, um, admissions, athletics, um, any of our academic areas that are going to employ students are going to be pretty flexible in the hours that, that you have. Um, Mike, do you want to talk anything about athletic, uh, some of the job opportunities in athletics that you see? We have an allocation of about $200,000 for student work. Uh, we rely on student workers, whether they're students that work in the athletic training area, uh, helping with laundry in the weight room, helping at home athletic events. Uh, there's quite a few uh, opportunities on campus, and if you go to, uh, what is, through CORE, Mark, that handshake is where yes. all those jobs will be listed. It's probably not really populated at this point in time, but throughout the course of the summer, jobs will be posted in, in that area. Yep. Um, part of the orientation process you guys will have this summer will be to download an app called Handshake um, that Augustana uses for student employment. Um, on that app, every job on campus will be posted to it. Um, you'll have a, a student resume put together there, so you can apply to jobs right on that, the app right there. When you come to campus for Welcome Week, when all of our first-year students come to campus, um, new students will come to campus, um, we'll have different departments represented at a bit of a job fair of sorts, where then you can go and meet in person. Um, you can talk to different people from different departments during that time, which can be really helpful. Um, our next question then, um, after the, the work study, 
um, is about uh, a downtown area outside of campus. Um, do students hang out um, outside of campus? Um, Mike, do you want to talk about the Quad Cities first? And I'll jump in if I, I have anything to add. Well, gosh, Mark, you're a lot younger than I am. You probably can speak to this right. way better than me. Yeah, let me take this one then, Mike. So, uh, Augustine, we're in Rock Island, Illinois, is where the campus is located. Um, it's going to take about five minutes to get to downtown Moline or downtown Rock Island. Um, if you want to go to Davenport, Iowa, across the river, which has a great downtown area as well, it's going to be 10 to 15 minutes, depending on bridge traffic. Um, but our students will hang out in Rock Island downtown and then Moline downtown. So um, in downtown Moline, you have the event center in the Quad Cities. Um, you can tell how long someone's been in the Quad Cities by how they refer to it. Um, it's probably is the mark, uh, is what Mike probably calls it. I call it the Tax Slayer Center. Um, but it's going to seat... Uh, around is it eight to ten thousand, Mike? Yep. And so, any like musical shows that come through the Quad Cities um, it, are going to play at the Tax Slayer Center there. It's going to be a large venue. Uh, minor league hockey, arena football is there. Um, and so, that's a, a spot that students go to hang out. Um, there's a lot of great areas in Moline there to hang out. In Rock Island, um, there's a part of Rock Island that's going to have places our students travel as well. Um, there are a lot of great breweries in the Quad Cities, so when students do turn 21, um, they have access to those areas. And then there'll actually be a, a, a bus in the Quad Cities that students can ride for free that transports back and forth between um, Rock Island and campus and Moline and campus. If you go over to Davenport, Iowa, right across the river, uh, you have our minor league baseball stadium. Uh, the Houston Astros single A affiliate is located right there. It is an awesome ballpark. Big Ferris wheel outside of left field, Mississippi River in right field. Um, as you go along River Drive, there'll be a great farmer's market um, in the fall and spring our students can go to on the weekends. Um, you have the Adler Theater on that side. You have the Figgy Art Museum. Um, there is a ton of things to do off campus. And yes, our students will travel off campus. Um, every once in a while, you just need to get away from your room. You need to get away from the library. There's a lot of different things that you can do. All right, um, we'll go ahead into the next one. The next one is about registering for classes. Um, for you guys, doing it virtually be a little bit different than we have uh, historically. Typically, we like to have you meet in person with your advisor. Um, but most of the time, student athletes uh, will have the recommendation to try to have earlier classes in the day. Um, what that allows you to do is have more flexibility for practice times in the afternoon and evenings. Um, or uh, you'll be asked to, to work out, whether it's in the weight room or, or conditioning in the afternoon and evening as well. Coaches, uh, and Mike, correct me wrong, coaches typically do not get involved in, in setting up or, or scheduling your classes. That's going to be between you and your advisor. Um, coaches are always going to take the, the back seat um, in terms of if you have a course you need to be taking, then absolutely um, we'll adjust workouts, um, practice times around that class. Mike, do you want to add anything there? Yeah, all of our incoming students will be assigned not only a first-year advisor, but also an academic advisor as well. And you, during the registration process, you'll have the opportunity to interact with at least one of those folks. Uh, during your freshman year, you're essentially going to be taking, for the most part, uh, general education requirements. And depending upon your academic major, you may during your first year take a class in your major, but typically freshmen are just taking general education requirements. And during the fall semester, they will typically enroll the first year students in three classes. And then you'll take one class during J term and then four classes during the spring semester. That's a pretty normative schedule for a first year student, whether you're a student athlete or not. You'll be taking three classes during the fall, one J term class, and then four classes during the spring semester. As a student athlete, you can also earn one of the HEPE credits, one of a PE credit basically, uh, by participating in your sport. So a fall sport student athlete, if you're a soccer player, a cross country runner, football, you can sign up and take that one credit class designated for your sport as a freshman during the fall semester. Typically the winter and the spring sports have that opportunity during the spring semester to do that. So when you go on uh, and you look at the various courses available, you can see 
you'll have an opportunity to do that and you can do that one time during your academic career here. Yep. Um, and so we had a question about transferring um, to Augustana as well and how that affects eligibility. Um, and so per the NCAA, um, if you use a year of eligibility before you come to Augustana or if you were to use two uh, from an athletic standpoint, um, you're going to have four seasons, uh, four years of eligibility. Um, from an academic side, um, if you're a high school student right now and you think, gosh, a year at community college is going to work first, um, just communicate that with us in advance um, because we can recommend courses for you to take during that first year um, to help your, your pursuit here. So um, hopefully that helps a little bit on that question. Um, each individual coach will kind of uh, help out along the way there um, by sport. Uh, Mike, for cross country and track runners, uh, can you talk about the seasons that they're going to experience? Sure. For our men's and women's student athletes that are involved in cross country and track, basically your season is the entire academic year. Uh, all of our fall sports teams will arrive on campus in August prior to the start of the academic year. So you'll have an opportunity to train and eat and interact with your teammates for a good week or two weeks before classes begin. But for cross country student athletes specifically, you're, uh, you're essentially competing the entire year because the cross country season begins in August. It goes through the second or third week of November. Then you transition right into indoor track. Uh, you take final exams in December, go home for Christmas for three weeks, come back in January for J term and the indoor season has begun. That goes through the first part of March and then we transition to the outdoor season. So. For those of you that are cross country track kids, you're basically involved with your sport the entire year. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, we do have uh, five or 10 more minutes um, for, for questions available before we do need to, to end the meeting. Um, so if you do have any additional questions, go ahead and, and shoot those uh, onto the, the group chat now um, and we'll be able to cover those. Um, one of the things that um, we, we want students to know um, is that we're really going to value the balance in your time um, at Augustana. Um, I've always viewed it as there are kind of three different um, circles that you can experience as a student. Um, as Mike had talked about earlier, um, academically that should and will be your first priority when you're here on campus. Um, for a lot of students then, there's two realms left. Uh, you're going to have uh, the sport that you're participating in, there's gonna be a group of people, teammates, coaches, uh, fans that, that you interact with regularly that you spend a lot of time on. Um, and it's gonna be important to you. Um, you're gonna train um, typically close to year round in, in some capacity for a lot of our students, you're gonna stay in pretty good shape. Um, but then there's, there's a third side to your Augustine experience and that's the, the social experience that you have here on campus. Um, we don't want our, our student athletes to be focused, okay, you know, sports in, in in class, that's all I can handle. Um, we want you to interact with people um, from all around campus. Um, within the athletics department, um, typically we see great support from um, fellow students. Um, a lot of times you're gonna see um, different sports supporting each other um, at their competitions, but then you're also gonna forge some great relationships um, within your academic major um, with students who are non-athletes. Um, you might join one of our Greek groups on campus um, and, and really build some great relationships there. Um, I have uh, a unique experience. I had an older brother who played in the Big Ten, um, so high level um, college basketball. Um, for him, there was no social component at all. It was, it was basketball. They told him when to go to class, what classes to go to. Um, it's it's going to be a lot different at Augustana College. Uh, we want you guys to grow in your time here. And so that means, one, competing at a really high level in that sport, but also making sure that you guys are developing socially um, and certainly academically in your time here as well. Mark, one thing that I would add, with the 25 teams that we have right now, we have about 660 student athletes on campus. So it's a very large subpopulation. Um, another thing that's really popular with our students is Greek life. And we have several teams where a high percentage of the student athletes are also either in a fraternity or a sorority. We have some teams where hardly anyone is involved in Greek life. And then we have some programs where virtually everyone on their roster is involved in it. So uh, I can assure you that there's ample opportunity to get involved in other things on campus. The coaches encourage it. 
because that's going to make your college experience much fuller and much richer. You're going to get a lot more out of it. If you just if you came to Augustana and just hung out with your teammates all the time, I think you would have a great experience, but you'd be missing out if you didn't expand your boundaries, get outside of your comfort zone and interact with other people and get involved in different things. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. Um, and so um, first off, thanks for joining us here. Um, obviously, um, for a lot of you guys, um, you, you may have just heard news about how your seasons were um, we're not going to be able to, to run out. Um, obviously, um, everyone's kind of going through, um, you know, a, a different uh, state of mind in, in that aspect. Um, but also for a lot of you guys, hey, you, you have a college career to look ready or to look forward to. Um, and so make sure you stay connected, one, um, with the coaches that you've been working with. Um, and then also get connected to each other, um, whether that's for your specific sport. Um, you know, start kind of making those plans and, and you know, getting excited about your time here at, at Augustana College. Um, you can connect on social media, um, whether it's Augustana Bound um, on Facebook, Instagram. Um, go ahead and start following those accounts. Um, I know they're sending out um, students are kind of introducing themselves and getting connected in that capacity, um, but that can be really helpful. Um, as we move into the summer, um, you'll get a lot of information via email. Um, and so if you've submitted your tuition deposit and set up your Augustana email account, check that regularly. Um, that's going to be the official means of communication for you in your time at Augustana College. And so we want to make sure that you are checking that and getting all the information you need. Um, if you have questions, um, if something comes up and you're unsure about it, um, always feel free to reach out to your admission counselor. Um, for us, uh, we might not know the answer right away, but we will find that answer or we'll connect you to the right people on campus to get that answer. Um, and so we are accessible to you guys at all times. Um, and so we want to make sure that um, the, the process this summer is a smooth one with a virtual orientation. And then once you guys do get here in the fall, um, there'll be plenty of time to, to celebrate your arrival and get you acclimated to our campus. So um, thank you again for being here today. Um, if you have any follow or go ahead, Mike. I wanted to add one other thing for, uh, for these folks. Um, our coaches have been very conscientious of maintaining contact with the, the current student athletes on their roster. We have rules and regulations that we have to live by with the NC2A and I, I hope that uh, our coaches have been maintaining contact with you. But beginning on May the 1st, um, our coaches can be a lot more proactive in the communication they have with students that have made their tuition deposit. So I would not be surprised if many of our coaches will be scheduling virtual meetings for all of their incoming recruits uh, or a combination of having those conversations along with meetings with their current team plus their incoming recruits as a means of making introductions and things along those lines. So I, I just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, those communications will likely be happening and they just can't start by rule until May the 1st. So please be aware of that. Terrific. Thanks, Mike. Um, and so for, for everyone out there, thank you for, for joining us today. If you have follow-up questions, um, feel free to email me directly um, at markroth at augustana.edu. Um, if you want to stick around as, as folks log off and send me a private group chat message, that'll work as well. Um, otherwise, uh, stay in touch um, and, and certainly stay in touch with uh, your specific counselor as well. Thanks, guys.